And as you can tell, the program is now running. And soon enough, what we'll see is the log that tells us that the screenshot is being taken. Right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can go about writing an application that takes screenshots of a user's desktop and stores them in a directory. We're also going to run it on a schedule so it takes a screenshot every five seconds and stores them in a directory so we can look at them later on. And of course, I'm going to walk you through every line of code, including how you can change it so you can run it maybe every five minutes or every Wednesday, for example. With that said, let's get started. Now what I've got in front of me is a project that I've created, I've called it Screenshot Grabber and on the left hand side I've created a file called main.py and I've got a folder called Screenshots, a folder <laughs> called Screenshots that's going to store all the screenshots uh, that we take uh, in the application. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out how we can take screenshots using Python. Now for this, there's a really cool library called Python Screenshot and essentially it does what it says in the tin. The idea is that it will take a screenshot of a user's desktop and it actually takes um, a screenshot if you have multiple screens too and it's Windows compatible which is fantastic and um, yeah it takes the screenshot and then it stores it in a location that you uh, define. So what we'll do is we'll grab the code to install the library in this case you can tell it also needs pillow too um, so what we'll do is we'll copy that and then we'll go back to VS Code and in my project directory I'm going to open up the terminal and I do that with command T and then I'm going to copy and paste that and then what we'll do is install both libraries. So let's get started by typing in the boilerplate code, which is if name domain. This basically tells Python where to start running the program. And here I want to say that we want to run the main function at first. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll define the main function and leave it empty for now. Now, funny enough, taking the screenshot using this library is actually really simple. You don't need to do much at all. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to define a method above called take screenshot. And then what this is going to do is it's not going to accept any parameters, but we are going to define a name for the image. So I'm going to call it image name. And then what we'll do is we'll say, uh, we'll give it a screenshot. I'll use an F string, so we'll do screenshot. And then we'll attach a timestamp so we know uh, when uh, the screenshot was taken. And also it gives us a unique name if we want to have more than one screenshot. So I'll do that. And then here we're going to make use of the date time library. So we'll do string date time dot now. And then up above, I will import date time from date time, import date time. So that looks good. So essentially, it's going to take the screenshot. Um, well, we haven't, <laughs> we're not going to take the screenshot yet, but we're defining the name of the image, which is going to have screenshot followed by the timestamp, which looks good. Now, to actually take the screenshot, all we need to do is import the pie screenshot library, and we can do that up above here. Pie screenshot as image grab as it's described in the documentation. Now, the cool thing about this is if a user has um, multiple screens, image grab um, or the method we're going to call in the second is actually going to uh, take one screenshot of both screens and put it into one image. That's quite handy. Again, if they just, as you can imagine, if they just have like one screen, then in that case, it will just take a screenshot. Um, of that, but if it has, if the user has multiple screens, then it'll take care of that too, which is quite cool. So what we're going to do is create a variable called screenshot, and then we're going to call the method called image grab dot grab, and that will take the screenshot. And then what we want to do is we want to save that screenshot in this screenshots directory. To do that, what I'm going to do is define a file path here, and this is going to be an f string, and then this is going to have uh, the directory where we're going to store all the screenshots. So in this case, it's going to be screenshots followed by the name of the screenshot. So I'm going to put a slash there followed by the name of the screenshot. And as you can um, um, expect here, we've defined the image name up above here. So what we'll do is we'll put that in there and that looks good. And then what we want to do is we want to now save that image using the image grab save function. And then that's going to take a file path. Oh, sorry, we want to call it on the screenshot variable. So we've taken the screenshot and now we want to save the screenshot um, um, using this full file path. Essentially, we want to save it with this image in the screenshots directory. The last thing we want to do is we want to return the file path. So all we have to do is return file path here and then that looks good. So now we've got the code in place to take the screenshot. What we want to do is we want to run this on the schedule. Now for this tutorial, what I'm going to do is run it every five seconds. So it takes a bunch of screenshots so that when we run the program, I can show you uh, the code in action and show you the program working. But what I'll do is I'll show you how you can run it on a period that you know suits you. So maybe you might want to run it every hour. Maybe you might want to run it every um, minute or you know, whatever it might be. I'll show you how you can go about doing that. So the first thing we're going to make use of is what's known as the schedule library. So the schedule library is quite popular in Python 
Python. And as you can expect, it's a library to schedule running tasks. So as you can tell here, for example, here's a very simple job and it just prints out a statement called I'm working. Um, it's the most simplest thing that you can probably do in Python. And here you can tell all you have to do is call schedule and you can tell um, if you're familiar with programming, there's this concept called behavior driven um, development, which is a way of defining uh, uh, your code or writing code in such a way uh, that it's behavioral. So um, I'm not going to get into too much detail in that, but as you can probably tell here, it's like here you're saying schedule every 10 minutes uh, or seconds do job. So it's quite readable and it's quite intuitive and it's quite a nice style of uh, uh, an API. So let's grab this pip install schedule. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to install the schedule library. So all we need to do is import the library. So I'm going to import it up here, import schedule. And then we'll come down here and then in the main method, we'll type schedule dot every and I'll say every five seconds, right? So again, you can do. So this is how you uh, would say every five seconds. Maybe you want to do every five minutes. Um, you can always check the documentation if you want to do something more specific, like maybe every Wednesday, uh, for example, you can do something like that. I believe it's every, um, if you wanted to do every Wednesday, it would look something like this, Wednesday dot at. Um, but yeah, if you just want to run it every, um, in this case, we're going to run it every five seconds. So every five dot seconds. And then here we're going to say do. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to take a screenshot, which is fabulous because um, that's quite simple. We'll have to find it above. And then really, uh, all you have to do is have a while true loop. And then this schedule is an object, right? So you've defined kind of the parameters of, you know, when you want to do the thing or what things you want to do to actually run the schedule to kick it off. You type schedule dot run underscore pending. And then you put a time dot sleep. So you just give it um, a second break to run. And then of course, time is an inbuilt library or system library in Python. So we want to import that here. Usually I like to separate out system libraries from uh, libraries that I've installed. Um, so we've, we've done that above. And so that looks good. So I think we're, we're ready to run the program. So one thing I forgot to do is define an extension for the image or the screenshot that we're saving. So all you have to do is type uh, .png. Um, if I, you know, if you exclude that, then what will happen is we'll save the image. I, I don't know if they will actually save the image, but um, you won't be able to open it. So uh, put .png there, that will suffice. And the other thing is uh, we kind of want to know when a screenshot has been taken. So for now, we'll just put a print uh, statement up here, taken screenshot. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll just assume that if it got to this point, uh, screenshot taken. And so this is just for us to know uh, that this function was run and we can keep an eye to see uh, that it's running every five seconds. So I'm going to give this program a run. What it's going to do is it's going to take a screenshot of the user's desktop every five seconds and it's going to store that in a screenshots directory. So let's give it a run. I'm going to type python main.py. And then what I'm going to do is tap enter. And as you can tell, the program is now running. And soon enough, what we'll see is the log that tells us that the screenshot has been taken. And as you can tell, it's been taken. And as you can tell, it's still running. So it's going to keep taking screenshots every five seconds as we've programmed it to. And what I'll do is I'm going to fast forward and show you all the screenshots that it's taken. Um, so I'm going to stop the program here. So I'm in the screenshots directory and I only run the program for about 15 seconds. And so we've only got three images. If I open the first one, you can tell here that it's taken a screenshot of my desktop, which funny enough is me running the program. So a bit of inception going on here. But if I move to the next screenshot, it's again taking the same thing um, and it keeps uh, going on, which is fantastic. So I hope you join these Python project tutorials. If you are, make sure you tap the like button so YouTube can push it up on the algorithm and make sure you subscribe and tap the bell icon so you get notified as soon as I post up the next tutorial. Until then, thanks a lot for watching and have a lovely weekend. Peace.